looking for magic cards, Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed products. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green life gain deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck features a ton of new cards from Strixhaven as well as having a solid foundation with some of the food synergy cards from Throne of Eldraine. And one of the new additions is Lisette, Dean of the Root, a 4 mana 4-4 four four legendary human druid, saying whenever we gain life we may pay 1 mana, and if we do, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature you control, and those creatures gain trample until end of turn, so this is a great payoff card for incrementally gaining life. And one way to do so is with our Overgrown Arch, a 2 mana 0 4 plant wall with Defender that taps to gain 1 life, and for 2 mana we can also sacrifice the Arch to learn, which is why we have 7 lessons in the sideboard we can potentially search up, including Environmental Sciences to gain a bit of life and find a land. We've got Basic Conjuration which also gains life and can find a creature, 2 copies of Containment Breach as Artifact and Enchantment Removal, Introduction to Annihilation as an expensive removal spell, Fractal Summoning can be a nice mana sink, and Mask Exhibition can make three different creatures for seven mana, but for the most part we're happy to keep our arch in play and gain life to enable our various synergies. And another new card from Strixhaven is Honor Troll, a three mana to three troll druid with vigilance, saying if we would gain life, we gain that much life plus one instead. And Honor Troll gets plus two plus one as long as we have 25 or more life, turning it into a 4 4 with vigilance, which is not too bad. And then Honor Troll, also very nice in combination with Accomplished Alchemist, a 4 mana 2 5 Elf Druid that can normally tap to add 1 mana of any color, but can also tap to add X mana of any color, where X is the amount of life we gained this turn. So that's where gaining life also comes in handy. Cards like Overgrown Arch in combination with Honor Troll can gain us 2 life, so then the Alchemist starts netting extra mana, and of course sacrificing a food token, especially with Honor Troll in play, will also start generating generating extra mana with our Accomplished Alchemist, so we can ramp out expensive cards, and also great in combination with our Trail of Crumbs, which is a nice mana sink for our various food synergies. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got the full playset of Gilded Goose, which can help us ramp and later make more food tokens to enable our various food synergies. Then at 2 mana, besides Overgrown Arch, we also have the full playset of Trail of Crumbs, an enchantment that when it enters a battlefield creates a food token, which is an artifact we can sacrifice for 2 mana to gain 3 life, and whenever we sacrifice a food we can pay 1 mana, and if we do look at the top 2 cards of our library to reveal a permanent card from among them and put it into our hand, and every single card in our deck counts as a permanent card, don't have any instants or sorceries, so Trail of Crumbs will always find something good. And then Wolf Will Haven also helps us ramp by enchanting one of our lands and produce additional green mana. Then besides our four copies of Honor Troll, we also have two copies of Satessan Petitioner, a 2-2 human druid that when it enters a battlefield we gain life equal to our devotion to green, so we add up all the green mana symbols on the permanents we control, and that will make up our devotion to green, which is especially synergistic with our accomplished alchemist, because if we have alchemist in play, and play Petitioner with a ton of devotion, all of a sudden the alchemist will tap for a lot of mana, which will make it easier to leverage our cards like Trail of Crumbs as well. And then of course Lizette, also very synergistic with any extra mana we have available. And then topping off our curve, we've got a full playset of Feasting Troll King, a 7-6 Troll Noble with Vigilance and Trample, and when the Troll King enters a battlefield, if we cast it from our hand, we get to make 3 food tokens, and we can sacrifice 3 foods to return the Troll King from our graveyard to the battlefield, so that's potentially a way for us to sacrifice a whole bunch of food tokens without spending the mana to sacrifice them, so that way we can potentially activate our Trail of Crumbs a whole bunch to find Find more action cards and then of course the food tokens can also be very synergistic with the rest of the deck and the troll king also adds four green devotion which is very nice with our satessan petitioner and then we also have two copies of the great henge the legendary artifact that costs x less to cast where x is the greatest power among creatures we control and can tap for two green mana and two life so has even more synergy there and whenever a non-token creature enters a battlefield under our control we can put a plus one plus one counter on it and we get to draw a card so another nice card draw engine along 
alongside our Trail of Crumbs. And then a mana base includes 16 basic forests and 4 copies of Castle Garenbrick, which is great for ramping out or feasting Troll King a turn sooner. And then 4 copies of a Radiant Fountain as well, as a land that enters the battlefield and gains 2 life, usually something we want to keep in hand for as long as possible so we can combo it with cards like Accomplished Alchemist, also very nice with Lisette and with our Honor Troll. Another land we could consider is Gingerbread Cabin, but I don't think we can afford to play Radiant Fountain, Castle Garenbrick and Gingerbread Cabin in the same deck, so we kind of have to make a choice there. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn 2 Haven, turn 3 Lisette, and thanks to our castle we can ramp out our troll a turn sooner too. Opponent with a blue-red deck and a Footfall Crater. So not exactly sure what our opponent is up to. Picked up Accomplished Alchemist as well, which is maybe better than Lisette right now since we're not currently triggering the ability. And then we're just going to try and get our Troll King in play as soon as possible. And then Arch will combo with Lissette nicely. Alright, so we can run out Troll King. And then hit for two. Assuming the Troll resolves. Could also use our Alchemist to cast the uh, front half of Lissette, but not too interested in Valentin. Alright, it's going to be an Afrit Flame Painter, and they already have a way to give it Trample potentially. So that could be a scary card, although we do have a Troll King that can play defense as well. So what's our plan here? Probably play Lissette plus Arch, and then keep a bunch of stuff on defense. Probably wanted to use my Castle Garenbrig there, so I could have kept my Alchemist untapped. Hopefully it doesn't matter too much here. Opponent actually chum blocked with the Flame Painter. Maybe there's a Sweeper incoming. Storm's Wrath. Fair enough. And a Shock finishes off my Troll King. But now we can use our Trail of Crumbs trick, which is quite nice here. Bring back our Troll King. And then we can spend three mana on our Trail of Crumbs to find more action. Especially interested in something like a Castle Garenbrig. I'll take an Arch to combo with my Lissettes. And then I also don't mind extra lands. I'll take another Castle. And then a Radiant Fountain's not bad here. That way we gain two. And then Alchemist can make a little bit of extra mana. So can run out Overgrown Arch plus maybe Gilded Goose. Another Storm's Wrath to kill Goose and Arch. And another Shock to finish off Troll King, but we can do this again with a second Trail of Crumbs. So, let me start here. And our opponent concedes, since there's just too much value incoming onto the next one. We're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn 1 Goose, turn 2 Haven. And then hopefully we can pick up a few extra lanes. Opponent on what appears to be a blank green elf deck. Alright, we'll keep our Radiant Fountain in hand for a little bit longer. If we can hold it until after we play Alchemist, that would be great. Alright, opponent's got Toski. And we get to play Alchemists. 
And then next turn, we can make use of a Radiant Fountain to generate extra mana. And we've got two blockers to prevent Toski from drawing too many cards. So we'll kill the Sentinel, block Toski. Opponent's got a village rights to draw to. And Lobstruck Beast Adventures making a 1 1 token. Alright, so let's think about our sequencing here. If I can play the troll before playing Radiant Fountain, that's also a plus. So this turn, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We could already play Great Henge. So that seems worth it. Play Henge. And then I can still play Honor Troll afterwards, which also seems worthwhile. Alternatively, we could play Goose and Trail, but we'll try this. All right, and then next turn we can use our Henge in combination with Alchemist to make more mana, and Trail of Crumbs a nice engine to find more action. And then Honor Troll also combos with Alchemist to gain more life and to generate more mana. So everything is working together beautifully. Sedgemore Witch, opponent's got one green mana left, plus a Sentinel. And we're gonna cast Hunt for Specimens, so not gonna see any attacks. Opponent got Containment Breach to answer our Great Henge, so we gotta get our value while we can. And kick things off with a Radiant Fountain. Play Trail of Crumbs. And then we can sacrifice our food token. Pay the one. And find Overgrown Arch, probably. And then I can use my Great Henge to gain more life. Make a food token with Gilded Goose. And then we can sacrifice that as well. So we can make 10 mana with Alchemist now, that seems pretty nice. Can play the Goose first maybe, to draw with Henge, see what we pick up. Ooh, Lissette is a nice one. So, tap this for 10, play Lissette, another Alchemist, yeah, let's get that in play. And I guess we'll just play Arch, and then if our opponent destroys my Great Henge, we still have Trail of Crumbs to provide a ton of value, and Honor Troll is fine to attack here, I think. All right, opponent's gonna have to spend most of their turn using Containment Breach on Henge. And in the meantime, we can leverage Arch plus Lissette to kill the opponent. And a Trample on Lissette is gonna be pretty key to trample over all these pest tokens as well. So it doesn't matter too much who blocks. All right, so we're gonna get to go off this turn, which is exciting. So, how do we kick things off? Maybe play another Trail of Crumbs. I can gain two life with Arch. And then spend the one from Lissette. Can start sacking food tokens with Trail as well. And the food tokens gain 4 life thanks to Honor Troll. So we're netting quite a bit of mana with each of those interactions. So we'll pay. And find another troll. Can pay again. Find a land. And then Lissette could pay as well here. 
Although I'm kind of thinking we can save Lisette for very last to gain more life with Alchemists first. And we can use Goose as well. So we'll add one man of any color. And then I'm going to use the mana from the Goose to sack another food token. So I'll decline the Trail of Crumbs trigger. Just so we can spend the mana sacking a food. That way my Alchemist can tap for the maximum amount of uh, life. So these decline. And our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, we were going to get to do some pretty busted things as each Alchemist taps for 7 mana. And then we can use that mana in combination with our... Uh, overgrown Arch here to pay for Lissette's ability. We can make more food with a Gilded Goose and spend that mana as well to maybe use the second Alchemist for even more mana. And then Honor Troll could also increase our life gain. So lots of powerful synergies going on and you kind of get to see all the engines in action here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with the fine hands. This might be a hand where we don't play Haven on turn 2 and instead go Arch into Troll. Opponents on a mono black Dream Devourer deck. I guess now that we picked up double Arch, I kind of like the sequence of Haven and then turn 3 double Arch and then turn 4 play the Troll. Uh -huh, underworld Dreams. So this might be the Underworld Dreams Peer into the Abyss combo deck. So hopefully they don't have the combo. Although we can learn for Containment Breach to destroy the dreams. So if we suspect that to be the case... Then next turn I should maybe find my Breach to destroy the dreams. Yeah, that's probably the safest play here. So I can gain one life first. Sacrifice to learn. And get Containment Breach. So sadly slows down our own game plan. But it beats dying next turn. It's going to be a Cosmos Elixir which we could also destroy. Well, now that we have another arch, I guess that's not a terrible idea. So we'll gain one life. Sacrifice. And get our second containment breach. And then next turn we can hopefully enact our own plan and get this trail of crumbs going. Opponent's gonna get in there with the Crawling Barons, that's fine. Alrighty. So how much mana do I have? Seven. So I can go Arch, Trail, Troll. Looks good. And next from Petitioner. Can gain a bunch of life. It's going to be a Draugr Necromancer, maybe followed by a removal spell. Heartless Act kills Troll, and now they get to play it with a Necromancer. Ooh, Great Hench. Sadly, a little bit short of casting it since we lost our Troll. So what's the play here? Could always learn with Arch, and then grab... Something out of the sideboard. Can take a look here what's left. Mascot Exhibition wouldn't be bad. Although I wouldn't be able to play it this turn. Can maybe just sacrifice our food token and see what we can find. And Gilded Goose. Not incredibly helpful. So... If I play Petitioner, it's going to be easier to play Henge next turn. So that's probably the play here. Although I wouldn't be able to sack Arch to then um, 
potentially get another card out of the sideboard. So maybe the play is Goose and then keep up Arch to learn potentially. Sure. And then we can get a mascot exhibition. Can also technically activate our trail again and pay the one mana. All right, put on takes out trail of crumbs. So in that case, we'll probably just sag the food and pay the one and find a backup great henge. Don't think we'll need that, so we'll just grab the land. And then we can still gain one with Arch. Alright, so these cards were in fact still in their hands, makes sense. So our opponent's gonna hit us for eight. And we're gonna gain one. Alrighty. So still unable to play Henge. I can play two petitioners to gain a ton of life, although they're not enabling any synergies, and it's better if we wait until we play Henge first. If I learn, I won't be able to get my exhibition and play it here. So I could learn for maybe a fractal summoning and play that. Or I could get a basic conjuration, try and find another troll maybe to play. Although I wouldn't be able to play Alchemist or Lisette. Could also go for Sciences and then I'm guaranteed to just hard cast Great Henge next turn. Don't hate a Fractal Summoning plan. And then I can play Summoning for X equals 4. And then hopefully next turn we can play Henge followed by a few Petitioners. All right, Feed the Serpent takes care of that problem, although at least they don't get it with the Necromancer. And a backup Underworld Dreams. All right, I'll take six. All right, well, it's uh, time to finally play Petitioner. And then do I keep Goose in hand? I think I do. And then we'll just make food with the original one and play the other cards after we play Henge. To draw some extra cards. They still have that Crawling Barons they can animate as well. So I'm just gonna take 10. And then we'll make a food and sacrifice it. All right, finally time for Henge. Into another petitioner. Soul Shatter makes me sacrifice one of the Petitioners, which they can play with Necromancer too. And their opponent enabled their own Honor Troll now. Well, we'll take eight. Want to avoid jumping while they have Necromancer out. Alright, Alchemist is a good one. Although probably still start with Goose.
There's Lisette. So that can help us grow the team. And still have mana for trail. Alright, hopefully we can start to stabilize here, although if our opponent ever finds their 7 mana sorcery, we're dead to the dreams combo. Do have one answer left in the sideboard, but only have the one arch left in the deck. Thirst kills Lissette, which is now gonna start synergizing with the arch on the opponent's side of the battlefield. So yeah, the fact that we don't have any spot removal for Necromancer is hurting quite a lot. Opponent runs out Volantin instead, okay. And no attacks. So we'll start by playing another trail. Sack of food. And let's see what we can find. Troll King. And second Troll King or Castle. Castle's pretty useful here. So we'll grab that. And then tap Henge. Use Castle to play Troll King, see what we draw off Henge. Another Haven. So don't want this extra mana to go to waste if we can help it. So how about... I use a goose for mana. And then instead of using the Trail of Crumbs, I think I'm going to use this mana to sack a food and then use Alchemists to draw a few cards with Trail. Now I'll sack the food. And then we can pay once, find troll, then we'll decline, and then now this can tap for 8 mana. Play troll. And still activate double trail. And then probably pass a turn. Alright, so we're starting to stabilize again. Elspeth's Nightmare takes out Gilded Goose. And no attacks from the opponent. Alrighty. So kick things off with another alchemist. Still have a decent number of cards left. Another trail. Sack of food. And we have a lot of trails we can activate here. Find another Lissette. Another Troll King. 
Could also go for a fountain, but... Nice to have some replacement food. Alrighty, and then now... Alchemist taps for 7 mana. Definitely have a lot of options here. Yeah, maybe wait for next turn to play Lissette and activate it a bunch. And for now just play Troll King and some other things. Alright, we found another Lissette. I guess it's okay to play one now. And that's probably good enough for now. Do we have any attacks? I think we'll wait. Opponent sacrifices to learn, but they didn't have any cards to search up, so maybe they misclicked instead of gaining one. Opponent gets to snipe a wolf of haven, that's fine. Don't want my troll to be in the graveyard on the third chapter of Nightmare. Opponent has to pass once again. Alright, so let's see if we can end the game this turn. Might be possible. So step one, draw some more cards with Henge. Pretty confident that we can draw the rest of our deck if we want to with double alchemist in play. There's another arch, which could also find our final answer to Underworld Dreams. So, fine to play arch. Another troll. Play that first. Probably should have tapped castle a while back. Uh, don't want to tap my hench until we play the troll. So there's a lot of micromanaging here. Alright, so now I'm okay sacking a food token. Just want to gain as much life as possible before we tap Alchemist. Find another troll. And then we'll pay for one more. Alright. That's fine. Decline. Cannot use a Castle Garenbrig mana on Lissette, so I'm still gonna decline here, so we can play Troll first. Alright, and Fountain is an even better land to play. Alright, so now I can pay for Lissette. This can tap for... A bunch of life, and we'll pay again. And these each tap for 15. So that's pretty nice. And we should be able to just gain enough life to kill the opponent on the spot here. And don't have many cards left in the deck. Henge is a pretty nice one to play here as well. Another Troll King. Play back a punch for two mana. And can sack some more food here just to get the pump from Lissette. And we don't have to draw with the trail anymore. Accomplished Alchemist now taps for 38. Not bad. Well, 
Well, that was one epic game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Double Field of Ruin. It's an unusual start. Um, I guess we'll go with the uh, Arch here. Set it up for the Alchemists. Probably shouldn't have played my castle. Although our opponent seems to be a colorless deck, so I don't know if they really intend to use the Field of Ruin. Gets a Solmson Lacrim in play, which can ramp. Alright, Radiant Fountain is going to be a nice one for next turn. There's a Forsaken Monument, sadly. So I'll probably have to learn for an answer to get rid of it. Containment Breach will take care of the legendary artifact. Alright, so if I play Radiant Fountain... I can make two mana with Alchemists. Although I can maybe save that for next turn if I'm not playing Henge yet. Although I also get to gain one life of Arch. Let's see, if I play Fountain, five plus three is eight mana. Can play Henge, but that doesn't leave enough mana to then Arch and Containment Breach. So I think we save the Radiant Fountain for next turn then. Gain one life. Learn. Get the Containment Breach. And then go Haven into Breach. And hopefully that'll delay an Ugin for a couple extra turns. Can't forget about Animal Sanctuary pumping Stone Coil Serpent, so won't be able to block with Gilded Goose. It's gonna be a kicked Myriad Construct, although we don't have any non-basic lands, so just a 4-4. And now I can block. Alright, Honor Troll, a nice draw. Do want to play that after we play Great Henge, though. So I think the sequencing is going to be Fountain first. Then play Henge. And then the steps for 4 mana. And we'll play another goose. And this one can make a food token. Alright, hopefully no Ugin. And then Troll King is going to be a nice follow-up as well.
It's gonna be another Forsaken Monument. So hopefully we can pick up another Arch for the second breach. We'll follow Haven safely on a basic forest so they can't destroy it with Field of Ruin. Opponent's got one card left in hand. So if that last card's not an Ugin, we're actually not in terrible shape. And there's Arch to blow up Monument as well. Now I could also save Arch as an answer for Ugin by getting Annihilation, which is also reasonable, although blowing up the Monument's probably still not a bad idea. So, play this. And a backup Arch is also nice to have. So sure, we'll gain the two here, learn. Plus one, thanks to the troll as well. Blow up monuments. And we can still play Troll. Seems fine. Could also gain more life by sacking a food. And then I can pay the one by sacking another food. But I think I just decline. And then this taps for seven. Play Arch. So let's say they play Ugin minus seven. Maybe it's better to hold Arch in hand. And then uh, I'll still have Trail of Crumbs I can potentially activate. In fact, I could activate it now. And get a backup troll. And then I could pay even more. And find a land. Alright. Seems good enough. And then Troll could attack. Would trade for all their creatures, which is probably fine if an Ugin comes down, since Ugin would not wipe away their creatures. Palladium Mirror would also let them ramp into the Ugin anyway, but Monument does other things too. So 8 mana. And it's gonna be a 10 10 Stone Coil Serpents. Fair enough. Should still be able to go over the top eventually with Lisette. So play Troll King. And I'm gonna avoid tapping Henge for as long as possible. Play Fountain. And there's Lisette. So... Yeah, I think I tamp this first anyway, and then the plan is just to sack some food. Ooh, Petitioner. Man, I wish the Alchemist was still on tap now. So I'll probably save that for next turn to completely go off. And another Troll King. Pay the one. And that's probably good enough for now. Still have double Goose to use double Trail of Crumbs if an Ugin does show up. Or we could sacrifice the arch to get an answer. Alright, and next turn we should be able to kill the opponent pretty easily. So step one, a Radiant Fountain. Or we can maybe play some creatures first. Draw with Henge. Castle's nice. Alright, time for Petitioner. Looks like it.
and that's gonna add 26 mana which we can sink into sacrificing some food and our opponent concedes alchemist about to tap for 30 mana and we can pretty much sack all our food tokens here grow the team and attack for the win and looks like the game even broke after that so not sure how I'm gonna transition back to the main menu. All right, we're back. So yeah, overall, this mono green life gain deck did a ton of work, and we got to see all the cool new synergies from Strixhaven in action. Alchemist plus Satassin Petitioner, especially a nice combo. Although can't really play too many Petitioners since they're only good once we have already established a bit of a board state. And then Lissette's also an MVP, helping us close out games once we generate a bunch of mana. So yeah, overall very satisfied with the end result, and definitely recommend it if you get the cards for it. Although don't expect it to necessarily win you too many games on the ladder. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.